The views expressed on the Jerry Cahill CF podcast are that of Jerry Cahill and guests, and not necessarily those of the Boomer Esiason Foundation. Nothing on the Jerry Cahill CF podcast should be considered medical advice. Such advice can only be given by a physician who is experienced with cystic fibrosis. The Boomer Esiason Foundation, Jerry Cahill and guests cannot be held responsible for any damage which may result from using the information on this podcast without the permission of your medical doctor. Welcome to Jerry Cahill's Living, Breathing, Succeeding podcast series. This show, being a spouse and primary caregiver, was made possible through an unrestricted educational grant from Kiesi to the Boomer Esiason Foundation. Today you'll meet Laura O'Donnell. She is a data analyst at a local hospital and happily married to her husband, Kevin, for over five years. Laura talks about what it's like being a spouse and caregiver to somebody with CF post-transplant. When you take on the role of spouse and when you accept being a significant other or a spouse or whatever to somebody with CF and transplant, I think that's one of the one of the aspects that you learn to deal with is that they'll always come first because their health is such an important part of your life. And what affects him affects me. Our life was very normal. I mean, CF was always a part of it. You know, he would do treatments, but it wasn't a big part of our life. But it wasn't probably till late 2015 that his lung function definitely took a toll, you know, went dropped down some notches and it definitely got tougher on us. So I had to be there for appointments and he was in the hospital a lot and so I had to take a lot of time off from work. And then even when he got home, I had to help out with medication, um, management, and then doing the everyday tasks in the household. I was the one that cleaned because he would, you know, didn't have the energy to clean and shouldn't be cleaning. I was the one taking out the trash and paying the bills. And um, so a lot relied on me just because he was getting so sick. They said he should be listed, he's sick enough to be listed. And he said he wasn't ready to. It wasn't until about a year and a half later that he said, you know what, I think I'm ready for this. I think I'm ready for transplant. It was a lot of driving back and forth to the hospital. And even in those times of really, really, really hard times when he was in a coma and he was at the worst, my friends and family were just lifesavers, literally for me. You know, it was just a serious, serious time in our lives and just being able to go there and, you know, decompress and just have those, you know, that half hour of time was huge, absolutely huge. The advice I give to any spouse um, going into, or any significant other going into the world of transplant um, at, at end stage CF, is to find out as much as possible um, about transplant because it really helps me, and to and I would say also to really connect with others who have been there because that has been invaluable to me. A lot has changed for us as a couple since this transplant. Most of it good, and then some of it is still tough. I will say the best things is just being able to do things. I come home now from the grocery store and it seems like a little thing, but he's out there helping me carry in the groceries. That was not our reality when he had in stage CF. That was not something he was doing years ago. The other aspect of transplant that negatively affects is financially. He has this bucket list of things he wants to do, you know, all these fun adventures, but a lot of the finances go to his meds or go to his, you know, um, everyday stuff. So I will say that's a tough part of transplant. Um, it's expensive. It's funny, post-transplant, the one thing that we do that we never really used to do and that's really fun and it sounds ridiculous is sitting on the couch and watching TV together. We have our TV shows that we watch now and, and that just seems so trivial because that's something that probably every couple takes for granted, but that wasn't something we were able to do beforehand. He's doing great now and luckily um, I learned that the R word isn't always as scary as you think it is. I mean, people tell you about the reje word rejection and you get so scared because um, the word rejection sounds scary. It is funny, now now post-transplant, I do think I have a little breathing room to think about me first. Having me time was really non-existent, I would say, just little bits and pieces here when he was going through things, but now I can focus on me more, which is nice. I guess what keeps me going every day and living this life is that we're living the life of post-transplant. It's just going on trips together and, and his zest for life now post-transplant. Um, all the things he wants to do. Um, we went snowmobiling a few months ago. Stuff that we've never talked about doing or even thought it was a possibility and now we're doing it and it's just, it's just so fun.